So when it comes to winning at online poker on a consistent basis, there's not just one thing you can apply that will instantly make you a winning player. You know, the reality is that it's a stack of skills that you apply over a given period of playing so many hands. And honestly, it took me a few years to become profitable, but I believe if you listen to these 10 tips I'm going to be going over, it's going to help you out for the long term. Of course, I'm also going to be going over some hands here in Ignition Poker. And if you guys are looking for some great poker sites and resources, we'll have some links directly below in the description. Okay, so my first tip, and this is actually a big one, is that you need to actually believe you're the best player at the table always. You know, if you don't feel confident when you're playing online poker, I've often found that I'll have a losing session. It's just, you know, the reality. So you got to start believing you're the best player at the table. Otherwise, why are you even playing? Okay, second, you need to add bluffing into your game and really get away from playing ABC poker. Now, playing really, really low limit games, playing ABC poker might work, you know, waiting for big hands, things like that. But a lot of the time when you get dealt a big hand, whether it's like ace king, ace queen, um, you know, things like that, uh, you are going to miss the flop a good amount of the time. I think it's a third, actually. So when you get a couple high cards like that, you're going to miss a third of the time. So you need to be, you know, bluffing and continue betting on the flop even when you miss and also throwing some turn bets into the mix as well. So you can start taking on more pots. But, um, you know, the reality is playing ABC poker, you just can't do it. You got to also add some suited, uh, you know, uh, connecting cards in your game like 8-9 suited, 7-6, 5-6, 10-9, etc. Okay, third, you need to start three betting a lot in cash games, especially shorthanded. Now, the really good players in online poker know this because three betting is going to help you do a couple of things. The first, it's going to help build a pot if you've got a decent hand. And the second reason is that you can get a lot of weaker hands to fold, um, and that'll help you take down the blinds. You should be stealing the blinds a lot of the time. And if you're getting raised in late position, it's likely that somebody has a mediocre hand. And if you three bet even with just an okay hand or another mediocre hand, you could start, you know, taking down that pot and getting those blinds. So start three betting a lot more, guys. Okay, fourth, play with a minimum of 10 to 20 buy-ins. Now, I'm not going to just straight up say, hey, you need to do the 20 buy-in rule. You know, uh, 10 buy-ins. Um, if you're beating the game you're playing, you really shouldn't need more than that. You know, I've... Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, I think the most I've ever lost is maybe like four or five binds in a row, which really hurt. But, you know, honestly, that shouldn't be happening to you. If you're beating the game you're playing, then I think 10 binds is fine. Okay, uh, fifth, always three bet with pocket queens, kings, and aces regardless. So, <clears throat> um, Let's say you have uh, pocket queens and somebody comes over the top and goes all in on you preflop. Uh, you got to understand that you could be up against a hand like ace king or even ace queen suited, something like that. And, you know, you, you need to three bet pocket queens, kings, aces regardless. It's just you got to do it. OK, uh, tip number six, keep it at two tables at a time. You guys know this is something I preach quite a bit. But the reason I say keep it at two tables is because. When you start playing three or four, five or six tables at a time, you really start to lose focus on the games you're playing. And it's the little details when you're playing online poker that are going to give you an edge. Um, on the flip side, if you're just playing two tables and you're playing against other players who are playing more than that, you actually do have an edge on them because they're not able to focus. So you can start doing um, little things and making little tweaks in your sessions that are going to help you win. Okay, number seven, play $200 cash games and above. This is another thing I talk about a lot. The reason is, you know, uh, online poker is an entertainment activity, but we all want to make some money at this. So when you start playing $200 games, uh, you could actually start making some decent money. You know, I've said this, but anywhere from two to five thousand dollars a month is realistic when you're beating the two hundred no limit games, and it's actually not that hard to do. Believe me, I've done it. You can do it, and the players aren't much better than the ones playing the fifty dollar games. All right, um, number eight is realize you're not going to win every time you play. Um, that's one of the hardest things about online poker, especially being a winning player long term is you are going to get into a session where you're going to take a bad beat. Maybe you're not going to play your, your A game, you're going to play your B game and you're going to lose. And that leads us to number nine is don't tilt when you take a bad beat. Another thing that took me years to get good at, but the reality is, um, if you stop letting, you know, these kind of things bother you. You're just going to have more self-control, and you need that. You need self-control when you're playing online poker. 
All right, uh, number 10, and this is a little bit off topic, I guess, but every once in a while, and I do this, you should play in a big multi-table tournament just to see if you can get a big win or run deep. Um, they're fun to play, and honestly, guys, it's not like you should be playing them all the time because the variance is so high, but every once in a while, hey, why not buy into a 100K uh, you know, guaranteed tournament or a 200K or a 500K or whatever is available? Um, so yeah, also, if you guys want to you know, comment below about any of these tips, feel free to do that. But we've still got some good hands coming up here that we, uh, you know, saw in a 500 no limit session. And yeah, man, um, definitely stick around to the end here because I do want to go over some of these hands. All right, that was a nice bluff right there, right? That was a smooth bluff. And that kind of gets me back to got to be adding bluffing into your game. All right, next hand I didn't even want to get involved with. I just let it go. This is actually a good session. You know, we bought in for 500, but I think we get up to like 1,400 or something like that. So playing good poker for sure, making some plays. All right, player three, you're going to raise, buddy. Ooh, we got that three bet I was talking about right there. It's a nice play. Now, let's say this guy's three betting with just like an okay hand. Um, you know, let's say he's got like an 8-7 suited. It's not exactly a bad spot to be in because you're building a pot and who knows what the flop's going to be. Anyways, his three bet worked right there. That was nice. All right, here we go with the ace-king. Could have three bet this, but I just made the call. Two players to act behind. And like I said, guys, these kind of hands are only going to hit a third of the time on the flop. So it's not like you're always going to hit something big. And actually, it's good we didn't three bet this one because that was a terrible flop for Ace King, especially against three other players. This is almost like a check fold. It's kind of sad, right? But it is. Okay, so at this point, check folding that ace king. Like I said, it is a sad thing to see, but it happens. I feel like this guy's got two pair right here. That's what the bet looks like. Maybe like a nine six, or maybe a queen six. Ooh, this guy came over the top. That was nice. Feels like a set right here. But it was not. Um, and that guy took down the hand. That was interesting. <laughs> All right, raising up here with the king jack. Like I said, guys, you want to stick around because um, we do have an all-in moment you're, you don't want to miss. Okay, hidden top pair. It's nice. Okay, getting re-raised. Hard to fold this, honestly, but... Just because that guy lost that hand, I felt like he was probably just getting a little bit crazy, so we came over, um, did our thing right there, and I think that was a nice play. Just kind of smelled like a buff, bluff. Okay, uh, anyways, next hand, pocket jacks here in the big... Small raise to 10 bucks. All right, so we kicked it up. We, I mean, we had to. Can't do a min raise. Um, anyways, no action right there, but we had to make that play. 
All right, guys. So this was kind of like the hand of the session. We had um, just one in here. We kind of just grinded our way, you know, getting up to where we were. But anyways, here we go with the, the King 8 suited. This was just a sick hand. I wanted to kind of just slowly go over. Um, I actually had uh, an interesting hand like this. It was like a King 9 not too long ago, where it was um, kind of the same situation where I got it all in on just a flush draw. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. All right, so clearly we're up for the session, doing pretty decent. <clears throat> and then um, this is just going to be like a, one of those hands, man, where I just risk it for that biscuit, I guess. And sometimes when you risk it for that biscuit, it pays off. You get the biscuit. All right, anyways, um, really just a straight flush draw. However, um, you know, runner, runner plot possibilities here for, uh, you know, straights, um, you know, turning a king could be good. I have no idea. But what which was interesting here was I believe that we're going to get a bet in and then this guy's going to raise it up. Uh, and like I said, uh, I just kind of went for it here. And when he made the call, I was actually a little worried. I was like, oh, my God, are we up against the set? It just felt like that. It felt like he had like a set of nines or deuces or something. But he didn't. I actually thought this was a pretty loose play. All right, so we hit it on the turn, really just dodging, uh, you know. And uh, yeah, man, we hit the king too. So that was actually pretty crazy. So you guys, um, I hope you enjoyed some of these tips uh, and some of the hands we went over here on Ignition. And, you know, like I said, uh, we've got some great resources below if you want to check anything out poker related. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next poker video.